Welcome back to episode two of our six series here. So we're standing in KWSP. I'm joined with Kieran, who uh, we described earlier as, as, as KWSP, KW Special Projects. Kieran is the founder, the owner, CEO, the man in charge. Um, we're standing with machines whirring away behind us here to take you really behind the scenes uh, into a workshop at Vista Heritage, which you may or may not have seen uh, at Sunday Scrambles. This is really a, a skunk works. Um, there's a lot of top secret projects going on here. That's why we're hidden here. That's why we're <laughs> hidden around the back next to, um, these are 3D printing they are, machines, yes. aren't they? Um, and Kieran is gonna tell us a little bit about what's, what you do here, uh, some of the parts you've created and what's happening behind us. Uh, Kieran, far away, what, what's, what's new for KW Special Projects? Well, first of all, let's do a virtual handshake. Yeah, we'll so we do the virtual, yes. the kicks. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, welcome to, to KWSP. We've been here for uh, a year and a bit now. Uh, and as you mentioned, we've got uh, a fair amount of 3D printing capability. But uh, these are the things that we can show you. We can't show you very often what comes out of the machines. And there's a much bigger one behind you there. Uh, because as you said, a lot of the work we do is, is pretty secret. There's a lot of F1 team work, performance sport work, and, uh, and automotive work that sort of Skunk Works hasn't yet been announced to the public and we have to be quiet about it. So it's a shame we can't share all those things with you. But I can tell you what we're doing with our additive manufacturing capabilities here. Um, I think it's probably fair to say that we're fairly unique on this site in that we, we've probably got the largest proportion of CAD machines and, and IT equipment and, uh, and machinery here. And uh, yeah, these machines quite literally build things from, from raw materials. It's amazing. It's, it's I mean, the backdrop here is quite a departure from what you usually see at Mr. Heritage if you think of historic cars and sort of um, exposed brick workshops and so on. Yep. But instead we're here with these, well, what are they? They're whirring away with these cassettes next to us. Um, what are you, what are you so, printing? What can so you these machines um, work in plastics. Okay. Uh, we're not limited to plastics. We have other, other machines as well that work in metals. Uh, but these will be printing, usually tooling for composites often um, plastic replacement parts for, for classic cars actually I and mean, we've done quite a lot of work for people on site here because we don't just do the manufacturing but we do the engineering as well so we scan and we have reverse engineering capability and we can scan anything pretty much in terms of shape size and form and then we can do the engineering work to make that part so we can do the CAD work and understand the bearing tolerances the fits the, 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 the sort of machining processes and manufacturing process and then we can design the part have it made externally within the supply chain or with um, Billy over at this, uh, Heritage Engineering does a lot of work for us. You know, or we can print stuff on these machines. And uh, that's ranged from tooling for, for um, castings. So we've made engine blocks and engine parts for, um, for Martin Stretton for his Alphas using 3D printed tooling. Or it could be actually printing end use parts like, a, like, like an upright, for example. So this is a, a Le Mans car front upright. Uh, axle and bearing and wheel hang off this bit and the suspension hangs off these bits. Well this is actually an example of one from early 2000 which was actually made using traditional manufacturing processes sort of investment casting. It takes about 16 weeks to get one of those made from the time you conceive the idea and start the design work. This is the same part made more recently using 3D printing technologies so that's printed direct or we call it printed because that's what everyone understands but actually it's built it's just direct built from powder and lasers, and uh, that's in titanium, and that took about 77 hours to manufacture. So this completely changes the, well, I suppose, what would have been a pattern making process in, in the old days uh, into something which is now 77 hours to create a part it, in metal. It's a shift in the skills. So we've gone from, yeah, you do a 2D drawing and pattern making to make the 3D object. Now we're doing all the 3D work in CAD and then directly manufacturing it in, in metals. It doesn't work for everything. And this is very good for low volume, high value parts at the yeah. moment, you know, aerospace, space, motorsport, um, parts in classic cars where you perhaps you can't buy the bits anymore from, from common sources. If you still want to make high volume cast parts and they can be cast, then this, you know, the method still works. But it's, uh, it's an interesting technology that is useful uh, in, in a range of, range of these sort of sectors. And it's very much, um in some ways an insurance policy I suppose if you're going to go into historic motor racing uh, and you race a one-of-one one vehicle then having the ability to come here and bring a part and say actually we need we need a few of these to keep yeah it and, and it's not just parts we've done whole cars so yeah. we we call it digital archiving yeah. where you actually take a complete car or body set for a vehicle that you don't want to get damaged whilst you're racing at a Goodwood or around the circuit here and we can archive it digitally in CAD 
so that if you do have any problems with it or if you want to make a, a sort of a, a replica that you can use for racing we can do that too so and digital that, archiving and manufacturing that, that, that's happened here hasn't it in yes. sort of cross-pollination between businesses yep. um, i think with classic performance engineering absolutely yeah with jaguar d type and various other things yeah D-type. we have Fantastic. so yeah the archiving things i think is really important and, and something that's perhaps overlooked and so what's if you're um scanning and archiving parts for for older cars historic motor racing cars what's the i suppose the difference if you're going from something back in the 50s and 60s to today what's the spectrum of work that you can carry out between those cars what's something that you're working on now that's kind of uh, um something that might we, we've never heard of in terms of the classic cars or, or, the, or the technology behind them so um you know, if you're printing that in, in metal say yeah. what materials can you print which well is that's, so that's actually that's an interesting point so when we've done some bits for uh, engine replacement parts we can actually upgrade the materials now okay. to make the parts more reliable um so yeah tr- traditionally the bits that you might have that were cast you wouldn't manufacture those using printing technologies mm-hmm. but we can use the printing technology to make the tooling so we can still use it to solve the problem uh, but then you still do your traditional casting at the, you know, of the actual part. So you've got like for like materials and, and, a, and a true replacement. But it is an interesting thing. The materials is probably the thing, materials and, and IT infrastructure are the things that have moved on the most you know, mm. in time. A car still has wheels and the wheels are still round. Those things haven't changed. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, what an insight into KW Special Projects. Um, we wish you, we could show you what's going on behind the camera. Sadly, we can't. But um, when we're allowed to uh, host a scramble again in the future, uh, maybe a chance to see inside the doors here uh, and meet some of the team from KW Special Projects. Kieran, thank you so much. That's been fantastic. Pleasure. Thank you.